The 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS has now taken the next step towards becoming the mainstream operating system for the Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'll explain why this is important, why this has taken so long, and whether it's worth upgrading your existing Raspberry Pi to this new version. I'll then show how you can upgrade to the latest version and something you may want to do to ensure it goes smoothly. The Raspberry Pi OS includes the desktop you see when you power up your Raspberry Pi, but that's just the graphical interface. The real power of the operating system is under the hood, based around the Linux kernel included in the GNU utilities. This is why some call it GNU Linux, although that doesn't give credit to the additional components used to provide the desktop environment and all the manner of additional software needed to give the full Raspberry Pi OS experience. So what does 32-bit and 64-bit actually mean? I'm going to simplify things a bit here, but essentially, from a hardware point of view, it's about the number of bits that the microprocessor can handle in a single operation. Essentially, this is down to the size of the registers inside the microprocessor chip. In a 32-bit processor, they are 32 bits long, which can hold 2 to the power 32 bits of information, or in the case of an unsigned integer, a value between 0 and about 4 million. With a 64-bit processor, then the registers are 64 bits long, which can hold 2 to the power of 64 bits of information. With an unsigned integer, that's between 0 and about 18 quintillion. Because the registers are larger, and the processor can in many cases process the entire register at the same time, then it means more processing can be done during the same time. This usually means that the program runs faster, but I'll come to that shortly. There are also some additional instructions that are included in the chipset. Now, this is simplified. There are also some registers with different sizes, such as some floating point registers. What boards can run the new 64-bit operating system? The reason that the Raspberry Pi OS has traditionally been 32 bits is because some of the models of the Raspberry Pi are only 32-bit capable. This includes the Raspberry Pi 1, Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 0. The newer boards, which includes the Raspberry Pi 3, 4 and the 0 2, are based around 64-bit processors. This means that only the Raspberry Pi 3 or later can actually run a 64-bit operating system. Does 64 bits run faster? In theory, a 64-bit processor can handle up to twice as much data, so it sounds like it will run much faster. But that's not necessarily the case. If the data that is being processed is only 32 bits, or the program is compiled for 32-bit processors, then it won't run any faster. Some 64-bit programs may even run a little slower due to the additional memory used, and whether it's optimised differently. In many cases, you can expect some performance improvement. What are the other benefits of 64 bits? There are three main benefits of moving to 64 bits. Not necessarily in any order, here's some of them. Performance. This is particularly relevant for programs that do a lot of number crunching, which they'll be able to make use of the expanded registers and perform the processing faster. Next is the amount of memory that can be accessed. The maximum amount of memory that can be directly accessed with the 32-bit address is 4 gigabytes. This is however expanded thanks to the large physical address extension, which allows up to 8 gigabytes of memory to be accessed in a 32-bit mode. The maximum that a single application can use is 3 gigabytes although there are a few programs that will need more than that. The advantage of this is that it increases the maximum amount of memory that the Raspberry Pi can use in future, so it could be paving the way for future Raspberry Pis with even more memory. In my experience, 8GB is more than enough for most users at the moment, but I'm sure future versions of the Raspberry Pi will be able to make use of more memory. Another benefit, and this is the one that ran it Pi commercial team have stated behind their reasoning is that some software is only available as 64-bit, particularly some closed source software 
but even some open source software is starting to make use of 64-bit optimizations. Really, 32-bit is now seen as outdated, and 64-bit is becoming the minimum for new software. Why move to 64 bits now? The 64 bit version has been around for about a year now, but it's been in beta and users have been discouraged from using it for critical applications. This is now only speculation on my part, but it's only since the Pi Zero 2 has been released that all new Raspberry Pis are capable of running a 64 bit operating system. So it makes more sense to encourage its use now. There's also a lot involved in maintaining multiple versions of the operating system. And I expect that there will still be some time before the 32-bit version is abandoned, although I expect that more future development may start to prioritise the 64-bit version. Are there any disadvantages to running 64-bit? The main problem with the 64-bit version is that it's not compatible across all the versions of the Raspberry Pi. I don't use my ras original Raspberry Pi as much now, but I still have three Raspberry Pi Zeros that are running on a regular basis, as well as still using some Raspberry Pi 2s on my model railway. I also have some robots or other projects based around older versions of the Raspberry Pi. I may upgrade these at some point in the future, but they are still doing the job they were designed for. So for now, I'll continue to need to run a 32-bit operating system on those. Another disadvantage is that the performance of the desktop, which can run very slowly on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. I haven't actually tried this as I don't normally run the full desktop on my Pi Zeros anyway. However, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 with lots of memory, then the 64-bit OS is probably a good choice. Another thing to be aware of is that whilst most software is now available for 64-bit, there's some software where you may need to use the 32-bit code. The good news about that is that in most cases, you can still run the 32-bit software, even if you have 64-bit OS. You just need to install the 32-bit version. On the Raspberry Pi website, they highlight the fact that the Chromium Wide Vine CDM library is only available in 32-bit version. This means you cannot stream from certain sites using the 64-bit which includes Netflix and Disney+. I'll show this later in the video, along with how to change to the 32-bit version of Chromium so you can get those working. There's some software that may not be available at all for the 64-bit version. This is going to be quite rare now, but an example at the moment is Mathematica. I expect it will be the case that there will be more software that will only work for the 64-bit OS compared to the 32-bit, and that the others will catch up that's enough of the theory, let's give it a go. I'll show you how you can install it and some things you may want to know about the new 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS. I'm going to install the 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS and see what it's like to use. I'll be trying this on a Raspberry Pi 4 and I'll be using a different SD card so I can switch between 32 bits and 64 bits. This may mean it's difficult to actually benchmark as the SD cards may run at different speeds, but it can give us a look at how well the 64-bit version works on a Raspberry Pi. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigabytes of memory. I'll be installing using the Raspberry Pi software imager. I didn't need to update the imager when I first installed the 64-bit version, but there's been a software update since, so it will likely prompt you to download the latest version of the imager software. I'm going to start by using the Raspberry Pi Imager. This is one I've installed previously. And if you go to the operating system choice, and then the default is still uh, the Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. But if you go onto the other, you'll find that there is the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. There's also a light version. The light ver version doesn't include a desktop environment. So we're going to go for the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. Choose storage. Uh, be careful if you've got multiple devices connected. This is the one that I'm wanting. This is a SD card. 
and this is a 64 gigabyte SD card. The other drive is an external USB drive, um, four terabytes. I really don't want to accidentally overwrite that, so make sure you select the one, which in this case is that one, and then just click right. Uh, you've got an opportunity to check now and it's still SD card MMC MS Pro so yes and it will ask for authentication so just enter your normal password and this is on a Linux system specifically and now it's going to take a while first download the image to your local computer and then write it to the SD card losing time I'm fading fast I just want to make it last try to let go of the past I close my eyes embrace the blast sleepless nights and headaches stack restlessness to hell and back what's my purpose what do I grab a slippery surface a heart attack and sometimes you just gotta believe so the imager has now finished writing to the SD card now that took about half an hour to download and install and then a further 20 minutes to verify that the image had been installed correctly. And that's all on a fairly reasonably fast broadband connection. So uh, just need to be aware that this may be quite a long download time. So now that the SD card can be taken out of the computer and put into the Raspberry Pi and we can see how it works. Now it's installed I've also enabled SSH and VNC so that I can access this remotely as before. I haven't mentioned Ubuntu so far in this video but they also have a 64-bit version which works on the Raspberry Pi. But one of the things that's put me off switching to Ubuntu is that Whilst you can install type VNC, the real VNC implementation that is used on the Raspberry Pi, which you can see here, is actually much better for many purposes. This is booted into the desktop, and to be honest, there's not really much to see. It looks the same as the 32-bit version, which is because it is. It's mostly based on the same code, give or take some optimizations, and it's just been compiled for a different processor. And you can see some of the software that's installed. This is based on the basic install, which you saw go through. The only exception being that I've added LibreOffice, which I installed separately. That's just so that I can see how responsive it is and how quickly it runs, which we'll cover very soon. There's lots more software available through the recommended software or the usual app repositories as well. I'll now start LibreOffice Writer so you can see how quickly it performs. Uh, so I've launched that now. This is in real time and it's should just take a few seconds before you start to see the status bar which just zips by and there we go up and running and ready for you to start typing that started really quickly but pretty much the same as the 32-bit version so it's this is due to the performance of the raspberry pi 4 not really the fact that it's been compiled for 64 bits in terms of performance, I've done some basic tests on how quickly the programs launch, etc. as you've just seen. It's not a proper benchmark, but it gives a rough idea. In the tests I've done, the boot time is a couple of seconds quicker, and most applications take about the same time to start as on the 32-bit, perhaps a couple of seconds faster. Note, however, I've 
actually got a slightly faster SD card which I'm using for the 64-bit version. So the performance improvement is likely to be due to that rather than the actual operating system. I think it's fair to say performance is about the same as the 32-bit OS for most normal tasks. The real test would be if you wanted to do some number crunching. In that case, I'd expect a noticeable improvement. But as Mathematica is not yet available, I've not been able to do much compressing in that regard. If I launch the web browser, we can take a look at, at Netflix and see what the problem is. If we just try and play one of the videos. And you see it doesn't work. It says you need to have the Widevine content decryption module installed. So we can change the 32-bit version of the Chromium browser, install that and then try again. To install is as simple as running a apt command, sudo apt install chromium browser, specifying the armhf, which is the 32-bit version, lib, and then lib wide vine cm, cdm0. there's quite a lot that's going to be installed and we'll set that running it's installing really quickly that just took a couple of minutes to install now that's done we can launch the browser again. So this is Netflix with the 32-bit version. We can just try And as you can see, this is now playing. There's no sound because I don't have any sound attached to the Raspberry Pi, but you can see that it's loaded the video and it's playing. In summary, although performance improvements for most users will be negligible at the moment, this is hopefully going to satisfy those that have been asking for the 64-bit operating system. I expect we will see improvements in software support in future and this is likely paving the way for new hardware that we hope to see in the future, although I'm not aware of anything in the pipeline just yet, especially with the current chip shortage meaning there's a general shortage of Raspberry Pis. Perhaps one negative point would be what happens to the 32-bit version. The main Raspberry Pi Model Bs have been 64-bit ready for some time but they've only recently replaced the Pi Zero with one that is 64-bit ready. As long as the 32-bit version of the operating system continues to be available for those other boards, and I don't see why they dropped support for some time yet, then it sounds like this is going to be a good step forward. I think it's going to be some time before we really see the benefits of the 64-bits though, but the future does look promising. What do you think? Are there any apps which you can now run which you couldn't run before? Are you upgrading straight away or looking to upgrade in the future? Please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it 
a thumbs up and subscribe to find out about future videos on the Raspberry Pi and other platforms in future.